Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee Weekend Edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for uh, Friday, December 21st through Sunday, December 23rd. Uh, Yeah. Happy weekend. Um, today, Today is the last day before winter break. So for all of you that will be going on winter break, Congratulations, you made it. (laughs) Um, I hope you guys have a great vacation. So this is just going to be a general energy reading for the weekend. This is not specific to anything, not any signs or like love or career or whatever. This is just whatever spirit wants to to speak to speak with us about today. Whatever wants to come through messages and whatnot that are going to come through today, that's going to come through. Okay. This doesn't have to be something that you're going through right now. This could be something that you go through later on down the road. Could be something from the past. May not be something you go through at all. But um, you may, you know, get some good insight. So if you want to stick around and hang out with us, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Energies are fluid. So, you know, take it as it resonates. Okay. So uh, I believe that's it. Let's just get straight to it. Right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, December 21st through Sunday, December 23rd. Thank you so much, Spirit. So winter solstice is today, December 21st, here in the United States, or at least the Northern Hemisphere. Um, And then the full moon is tomorrow. And I was reading an article um, talking about how the full moon and winter solstice are happening all at once this year. Apparently, there's also going to be a meteor shower. So... If you get a chance to see that, uh, congratulations, because you're like super lucky. (laughs) I don't know exactly where you're going to be able to see it, but um, that is a thing. Uh, But the wind, uh, uh, so the full moon may be visible to many of us today, um, but the peak of the full moon is not until noon on the 22nd. All right, so depending on where you are, of course, that's going to vary, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, weekend edition, Friday, December 21st through Sunday, December 23rd. All right, guys, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got here. Here we go. Best messages, please, spirit, shadow work. Well, that makes quite a bit of sense. All right, so, so far, we've got shadow work. And with winter solstice happening today, the full moon happening tomorrow, uh, December 22nd, That makes a lot of work, Uh, a lot of work. Well, it does make a lot of work, but (laughs) it also makes a lot of sense. Um, I know I've been going through a really purgy period between the solstice and the full moon. There's a lot that's been coming up that is being released. And it's funny because, you know, we go through these periods where um, things from the past resurface and... You know, we're, it's like we're reliving them all over again. Um, normally that happens, well, when that happens, it's because it's giving you a chance to release it. So you're releasing the energies associated with, that, with whatever memories um, are coming through, okay? And I just, as I was thinking about that before I even started talking about it, I was like, I got a part of me, I guess it was my ego, was saying, 
oh my God, we're constantly going through this stuff over and over. When is it ever going to end? But then I realized that every time, you know, this happens, it's always something different. It might be surrounding, you know, the same circumstances, but for me, at least, it's always something different. At least if you, if you successfully release it, the next phase is something different. So it's not like we're repurging the same thing over and over. It's just different instances within the same circumstance that are still causing us turmoil, okay? So the theme of the weekend, shadow work. And you see how there's that full moon on the, the, the card here. This is the moon child tarot. There are a lot of moon images, but our theme for the weekend is shadow work and it's full moon energy and we have a full moon this weekend. I am gonna read a little bit from the book on that. We also have, come now, come now. We have the hanged man, okay? And we have a crescent moon on this one. We have the hanged man and, ooh, the three of swords so far. All right, so this is, this is pretty on point with the weekend that we're about to have between the solstice and the full moon, okay? Let's get a little bit more. Thank you so much, Spirit. Moon child. Okay. Hey, look at that. The sun. All right. Good Lord. That is, is quite a bit here. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually pretty on point right now, you guys. Underneath the deck is the Eight of Cups, all right? And so definitely, we're definitely moving on. We're moving away from all kinds of stuff that no longer serves us. We've got Moonchild here, all right? So that's going to go up with the Shadow Work card as our theme for the weekend. Okay, and these two cards, Shadow Work and Moon Child, are, um, are a little, they are a specific, uh, um, special cards in terms of this deck here. Okay, give me just a few moments, let me get all this together. <laughs> uh-huh, all right. Wow. 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 There's a lot here, you guys. There is quite a bit. All right. So, I mean, this is the weekend edition, so we have a lot to talk about this weekend, apparently. So we've, we're starting with Shadow Work and Moon Child, and with that, we have the Hanged Man and the Three of Swords. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to move my tea. And um, I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put the Hanged Man and the Three of Swords with Shadow Work, all right, and the Moon Child. And I'll get into those in a second. Um, okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, I'll get to those, to those in a second. Wow, I don't even know where, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin here. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start with this one queen of pentacles and the five of swords all right so this is many of us right now especially those in the divine feminine camp um, you don't have to identify with a twin flame situation in order to identify with the divine masculine or the divine feminine we all have these divine energies within all right um, but this actually makes a lot of sense within the feminine camp the divine feminine camp um she's feeling pretty combative right now that has to do with the full moon energies that are that are raging right now okay um it is somewhat self-destructive a little bit um just with how much she feels she needs to fight um, it's very aggressive. She may, you may be feeling quite aggressive at the moment. Okay. Now within the masculine camp, the divine masculine camp, we have two for you divine masculine. And actually we have, and we have the counterparts on the, on the table. Um, but I'm going to start with the, this one here, the king of swords, the nine of cups and the sun. All right. So 
for the divine masculine energies Again, you don't have to identify with a twin flame situation in order to resonate with divine masculine or divine feminine energies. But for the, in the masculine camp, there's a lot of illumination happening. There's a realization of what is going to be or what is wish fulfillment here. Okay. The sun is the brightest and happiest and best card in the deck. All right. We have the sun, the king of swords and the nine of cups. So there's definitely energies of illumination, of realization, of understanding. And some of this might be, I'm feeling for some of you within the masculine camp, um, this might be a harsh truth. Uh, it might be a little blinding, a little blazing. It might burn a little, but ultimately what, what's burning is burning away everything that kept you from seeing. It's burning away the darkness is what Spirit has just said. Now, we all have these masculine and feminine energies within, so you don't have to be strictly with resonating with the divine masculine for that to resonate with you, okay? This could be something that's going on within you, um, within between the divine masculine and divine feminine energies. Next, what I want to get to is the King of Cups, 11-11 on the counter, King of Cups, <laughs> the Ace of Swords, and the five of cups so within the divine masculine camp there are a lot of realizations happening here okay there are a lot of harsh truths coming into play especially when it comes to the emotions when it comes to love um, when it comes to emotional fulfillment there is an energy of somewhat of a missed opportunity here but with the five of cups it's it's a missed opportunity that has now turned into a realization of that missed opportunity and now there's a there's some of you within the masculine camp are dealing with the realization or the understanding of what's actually happened, how it has hurt someone, because now you're feeling that pain in some way. It's like, it's very much an energy of what goes around comes around, okay? And then finally, we've got the counterpart here. We've got the Queen of Cups. Well, actually not finally. There's one more group that we have to talk about, but you have the Queen of Cups the Eight of Wands in reverse, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Knight of Cups. So, the Queen of Cups is very much all up in her feelings, but here, what I'm getting with this is that she kind of has every right to be. Um, in, many, in many cases, she very much has every right to be, and so, with the queen of pentacles okay there is an energy this is like especially with the queen of pentacles the queen of pentacles is like the protective energy within the feminine um it's um it's almost like the mama bear who's kind of who you know who just had her cubs and is now like on the <laughs> on the super defensive like, don't you dare even think about touching my children. This is kind of the energy that she's that's coming through here. Um, but this is for herself, okay? Or potentially her family. Um, but it's I'm picking up it's mostly for herself. With the Queen of Cups here and the Eight of Wands, the Eight of Wands is in reverse. There is an energy of no communication, um, no movement when it comes to love and a relationship um but also this is this is like an extreme depiction of um someone being in like say their cancer cancerian shell um not wanting to communicate whatsoever she's going through a really rough time right now but then see at the same time that's coupled with the ten of pentacles and the knight of cups and both of those are upright so it's as if it's like she's taking her emotional state and it's not like she's not expressing herself but i'm with the eight of wands in reverse i'm getting an energy of she's just not communicating with a specific person or a specific group of people maybe um take that as it resonates you know it could just be strictly People from the past that just exhibited a ton of toxic energy and she just doesn't want anything to do with that anymore. And here we go. That is depicted by the devil here. The devil, the four of swords and the nine. I'm sorry, the four of pentacles and the nine of swords. Um, 
But this is symbolizing the overall overarching energies between the two sides, okay? Um, this is the, the, the central energy between the two of the two of us, all right, the, the, the masculine and the feminine. These are, these are the energies that are affecting both, but they're affecting both in a different way. For the feminine camp, this is working, well, it, actually for both masculine and feminine, there is a release of this codependent, toxic, devil-like, addictive energy, whatever the devil represents for you. Um, now, what I'm getting for the masculine side is that with the Four of Pentacles, you're still very much holding on to this energy for dear life. And with the Nine of Swords, you are anxious about needing to let it go. Now, some of you really are ignoring it is what I'm getting here, but, but you're ignoring it only as much as you can um, because you know deep down that you have to let go of this at some point. It's only going to continue to drag you down, but many of you are resisting, you know, fighting tooth and nail about this. Like you really are just not letting go at all. Um, some of you, you are starting to realize that you need to let go. And then that's where we go, we slide over into kind of like the feminine side of things and how she's dealing with or expressing this energy. And I really feel like for the feminine, this is like, will you ever be able to let this go? You've been wanting to, whatever it is you're looking to release, you've been wanting to for some time. But now it's getting to the point where it's like there, are, it's like, it's like, you're finding more and more newer and newer ways to be upset about the same old situation. And it's like, is this ever going to end? I mean, sure, granted, it's not necessarily, I'm not stewing or purging the same specific circumstance that comes out of the, of, uh, the same specific situation or whatever that comes out of these same circumstances that, that keep coming up. But it's like you're finding new pieces of the puzzle to get mad about or be upset about or whatever. And it's not even like it's new. It's just you, you're releasing every single bit of it. So it's not even new to you. I mean, from, uh, from, for example, for me, it's been, it's the same circumstance, but it's pieces of it that I had not even thought about in the longest time that come to think of it now that it's come back up. It was something that did bother me at the time, but it just got buried underneath all the rubbish. And so now that things are being uncovered, these small pieces are coming back up, are rearing their ugly heads, and I'm having to basically push through them. Well, think about it this way. Once you push through them, they're done. Once you get over it, you're done. You don't have to, and I say that lightly, I know getting get over it is kind of like a a pretty triggering statement but I, I I'm just saying once you get through it once you get past it you're good okay so don't worry about it ultimately you'll get there in time but a lot of these circumstances these situations have been very traumatic and you don't even really realize it in the moment until you get later on down the road and you start to really purge the situation and you're like oh my god I didn't know that affected me so much well now you know <laughs> okay i do want to read shadow work um and moon child just because those are specific cards to this deck hold on just a moment just a moment okay um there's specific cards to the deck so i do want to read a little bit about them so, we're going to start with uh, shadow work. Yes, shadow work. Uh, the key words here are illuminate, balance, synergy, healing, acceptance, inquiries. What deeper habits are ready for my awareness? 
Where is my shadow presenting itself most? Within, within each of us is a shadow self, a multifaceted inner vessel of the pains, traumas, fears, and suppressions we have experienced throughout our life. Very often we think the shadow as something negative or malevolent, as the world itself conjures up themes of darkness or fear. But if we look a bit closer, we may find that our shadows are the ultimate liberators, acting as the most profound catalysts for aligning with our truth. Like the dark matter of our universe and the great cosmic womb, dreams and seeds of light may be cultivated here as healing and creation may be birthed through cycles and doorways of revolutionary change. Our shadows can help anchor our own brilliance and self-worth in teaching us to rise and transmute from the ashes that divide us from within. This may happen when we release our hidden burdens or remove the masks of the personas we continuously hide behind, allowing us to dive deeper within the waters of our heart. The obscured aspects of our shadow also show us where our thoughts or habits have become entrenched or addictive over time, which is helpful when looking at how and where we may need to make some profound changes in our life. Okay, in order to bring our hidden facets, qualities, or dreams to light, we can delve into shadow work, a concept coined by the renowned psychologist Carl Jung, which describes the process of exploring our suppressed fears, desires, traits, gifts, talents, or belief systems that we have either consciously or unconsciously hidden within ourselves. These may also be the fragments of our human experience that are locked away, uh, waiting to be reignited I'm sorry, reintegrated or healed. And absolutely, that's absolutely what's going on. Um, the solstice and in conjunction with this full moon in Cancer, by the way, the full moon is in Cancer, which is highly emotional anyway. I mean, in Eastern astrology, I am a Cancer moon. I totally get it. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty emotionally charged to begin with, not to mention it's a full moon. Oh, and by the way, Look at this nine of swords here. It sure as shit does have a full moon on it. I mean, just saying. Okay, so there's that. Um, but next, <laughs> uh, next, let's read Moonchild. A little, little, read a little bit about that. Keywords for Moonchild are magic. Ritual, connection, abundance, manifestation. When this card shows up, it asks you to consider how you can cultivate your own sacred relationship with the moon. This luminous beacon functions as a great celestial doorway into new spaces and opportunities within and around you. Helping you see beyond the limitations of your lived reality. Through keeping track of her ebb and flow, as well as our feelings and sensations each day, we can refine our intuition and boundaries each month to help support more informed choices when it comes to our heart. Are there energies that need to be released? Is it time to start a new project? What is internally or externally inhibiting you from rising, growing, or healing? How are you delaying your own productivity? Since Mama Luna also illuminates our shadows, that she helps us glean meaning and potency from the darker moments in our lives, the mistakes, the heartache, the falling and failure. But instead of these burdens, she sees diamonds of potential forged within the fires of our deepest dimensions, pushing and pulling us to wise up to our layers provoking us to feel all the feels and express them at times with other lunacy. But don't fret, there is a method to her madness. She brings out our most raw human expressions and allows us to transmute them from within. After this, we may become energetically lighter, softer, and prepared for the dawn, knowing how far we have come and how far we can go. Where would you like to journey with her next. Okay, I mean, that's really powerful. So obviously, you know, this is a really powerful weekend for all of us in terms of, you know, what's going on with the moon here. 
There's a lot of illumination happening for the Divine Masculine. Um, and actually, what I'm getting, because I'm getting here the Sun, the King of Cups, and the Nine of Cups, all right? So what I'm getting from the Sun is that, um, you know, this might be hard. This might be rough. You know, it might burn. There might be a lot of realizations that are coming through for those, for, for the Divine Masculine energies. Um, that are harsh truths, potentially. I mean, the light of the sun can be really harsh, okay? Um, if you've ever practiced sun gazing, it's really a great way to work on opening your third eye, but, you know, you really have to work yourself up to it. It's not like you can just go outside one day on a random day um, and stare at the noon sun. Like, no, you have to work your way up to that. And so that's kind of the energy here that's happening some of this is kind of blinding for some of the masculine energies, but it's a good thing, okay? The sun is the best card in the deck. And so, so what it's saying to me is even though this might be harsh and blinding right now, ultimately it's a good thing because it's illuminating things for you. I mean, the king of swords, the king of cups, which is talking about the emotions. There's a lot of emotional maturity that's coming into play right now for the masculines. Um, and a lot of realizations. I mean, between the sun, the king of swords, and the ace of swords here, okay? Because the ace of swords is right here, all right? Um, and especially with this five of cups, there's definitely an energy of what goes around comes around for many of them. And that's part of this harsh truth that's going on here for you, okay, divine masculine? Now with the divine feminine, it's funny because the, the, the divine masculine has the five of cups. The divine feminine has the five of swords. Again, you do not have to identify with a twin flame situation in order for this to resonate with you. We all have these, these divine masculine and divine feminine energies within, okay? But over here on the feminine side, you have the queen of pentacles, the queen of cups, okay? So, but also you have the five of swords, whereas the five, the, the masculine camp has the five of cups. The, the feminines are probably, are feeling quite combative right now, all right? And that's probably to her own detriment just because she's really in a serious fight mode. Um, she's, but, but that's because she's feeling everything you know, coming up for her, all this, uh, this new source of purging and healing that's coming up for her. And it's agitating. It's aggravating. Okay. Um, and it's, it's interesting because you do have kind of a depiction of somewhat of a counterpart between the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, because I do really feel that the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles are very similar. Neither one of them are going to take any shit. The thing about the Queen of Pentacles is she is more emotionally invested than the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is completely aloof, um, completely detached, doesn't even want to know about the emotional side of things. She doesn't have the time or the energy or the patience for it. Queen of Pentacles, however, is very different. And that can make her very deadly because she's still very logical, but she's got the emotional twinge in there, okay? So, um, but, so the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups... They're very private energies too when they want to be, when they need to be. And so a lot of this is happening internally. So that's why you have this eight of wands in reverse, all right? So masculines out there, if your feminine or your counterpart is not talking to you right now, it's because, it's because it's, well, most likely, I mean, if you guys have been in communication and now you're not talking all of a sudden or whatever, she's going through a lot, all right? But with the Knight of Cups here and the Ten of Pentacles, all right, there's definitely, well, I'm getting a healing vibe from the Knight of Cups, all right? And the Ten of Pentacles is saying to me, this is the long term, the long haul, all right? This is the energies of doing the work to get to, I guess you could say the happily ever after, but this is not necessarily, I mean, this is not the 10 of cups here. It's the 10 of pentacles. Um, so this could have, this could have everything to do with business career and stuff like that, but it also, it still has to do potentially with family. All right. But it's the structure. It's the structure within the family. Okay. That's what I'm seeing, especially with all of these stones here. It's the structure and um, you know, the Queen of Pentacles firmly believes that, you know, she has to clean all of this emotional stuff up for this, 
for the situation to be balanced and healthy for everyone. And that healing is coming through as the Knight of Cups here. All right. This is taking the time to herself to heal and to rest and recuperate and kind of like being a little selfish at the moment in order to uh, be a better version of herself than she was in the past. Okay. Now, in the theme for the weekend, <clears throat> you know, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. We spoke about shadow work and moon child. It all, we also have the hanged man and the three of swords. All right. So this might be a weekend where, you know, you may have had plans or you may have wanted to go do some things, but you can't, or you're now suddenly not willing to. That's because of this purging that's happening. All right. Um, the hanged man is bringing illumination. It's bringing enlightenment um, in places where you may have felt stuck or stagnant. Okay. It's helping you gain some sort of perspective, a new perspective. It's helping you gain some sort of enlightenment through rehashing or reworking through the heartbreak, right? Alrighty, guys, let's get some clarification here. Oops. Just a moment. Okay. Clarification time. Clarification time. Ooh, clarification time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm being silly. All right, we're going to start with the feminine camp here. Are we? Or should we do the overall? Uh, let's do the overall energy first, like the the theme for the weekend here, even though I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, that is pretty self-explanatory. So instead, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I originally wanted to do, and we're going to start with the feminine camp. Then we'll go to the masculine, and then we'll get the combining energies in between the both, okay? For the feminines. All right, one more shuffle here, and then we'll get our clarification started. <laughs> Alrighty. Within the feminine camp, spirit, please. Uh, clarification, please, for the weekend of February twenty-first to um, February. No, Friday. <laughs> Friday, December 21st through Sunday, December 23rd. Thank you so much, Spirit, for the feminine camp here. Hmm. Oop, here we go. Six of Wands. Okay. Victory. Pride and ego. Yes. Now, pride and ego is what's helping. Oh, wow. Pride and ego is kind of working in your favor here. This is the energy of the eight of wands in reverse, deciding not to communicate. And this really could be just be not communicating with others. Uh, it doesn't have to be a significant other. It just could be friends. Like, if, like for example, if maybe you had some plans this weekend or you originally may have wanted to potentially do something this weekend... Um, I don't see you really wanting to do that anymore. Um, I don't see you really wanting to communicate with anybody anymore, just wanting to keep to yourself. That's where the pride and the ego is coming into play. But again, just like the Queen of Pentacles was stating, that's also a defense mechanism. Okay, and ultimately that's going to bring you a victory here because it's, you're gonna, it's gonna help you heal and surmount, overcome these energies, these really intense energies. And underneath the deck, you have the magician, all right? So this is a manif manifestation tactic. This is a manifestation tool, okay? You're really working hard. You're really working hard to get through all of this shit. And actually, you may not, wanting to be, you may not be wanting to communicate with anyone because of how combative you're feeling. And that's a really wise move, okay? You are, many of you within the Divine Feminine camp or those of you that are resonating with this side of the equation, 
um, you're feeling, you're probably feeling pretty agitated and combative right now. Anybody comes at you the wrong way, you're throwing daggers. You know what I mean? Like you're throwing bones, you're, you're slicing and dicing. I mean, I'm really glad. <laughs> I'm very, very glad that we don't have the queen of swords here. Again, like I was saying, we do have the queen of pentacles and she is very similar, but she is more protective than combative. She knows when to fight and when not to fight. But right now she's in the energy of fight or flight. So if anybody comes in the comes at her the wrong way, she's not hesitating to put them in their place, okay? So that really is why there really is a lack of communication this week. People are all up in their emotions, but also there's healing energy. Also, but the healing energy is between the Knight of Cups, which is buried underneath here, the Knight of Cups, but also the Queen of Cups, all right? And then I'm seeing the energies of the Queen of Pentacles as like the the emergency nurse coming in to, <laughs> I guess you could say do some sort of emergency surgery or something like that. But that's just, that's a funny little image that the spirit is giving me here. All right. So now let's get into the masculine camp. For the masculines, please spirit. Thank you so much or at least this side of the equation here. Ooh, nothing, huh? Let's see, let's see. There we go, okay, all right, there we go. Okay, well see, now the masculines have the Eight of Cups too. Uh, underneath, it, the, underneath the deck is the Three of Wands. So there's energies of um, investing, um, I feel like for some of you, you really have, you've, uh, you've invested a lot into where you are headed. Some of, for some of you, this is starting to become spiritual investment. But uh, for others of you, I really feel like if you're not actively doing this, you're getting ready to walk away from some sort of situation that you've been investing in a long time, for a long time. Judgment and the Three of Pentacles. So there is definitely a change of perspective that is happening here for many within the, in the masculine camp. Again, whether you're a twin flame or not, we all have these masculine, divine masculine, divine feminine energies within, okay? You can resonate with one, you can resonate with both. You may not resonate at all. If you don't resonate at all, then this may not be the message for you. But anyway, that's okay. You may as well keep listening at this point. <laughs> but with the Eight of Cups, a Judgment, and the Three of Pentacles, there is a reassessment happening. For some of you in the Divine Masculine camp, or some of you that are resonating with the Divine Masculine energies right now, you're being called to start a new business, to start your own business. Some of you may have already gotten you know, gotten ready for that. You started preparing for it. Maybe some of you have already answered that call. Um, and for some of you that have already answered that call, what you're going through is the last purging process of whatever it is you've walked away from with the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is here twice because the Eight of Cups is underneath the deck for the main deck, for the main reading. And now we have it for the masculine side of things. Um, and judgment with the Three of Pentacles. So there's also a calling towards greater self-mastery. Also greater self-expression with this Three of Pentacles. I really do see the Three of Pentacles as a somewhat creative card. It can talk about self-expression. It can also talk about teamwork and building, okay? Building something new. Now teamwork could be with other people or it could just be the teamwork between mind, body, and spirit. Um, There's a lot of creative energy for the Divine Masculine right now because, the, you know, you've got the Three of Pentacles and the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is about, um, it could be about waiting for a return on an investment, waiting for your ships to come in. But it also is about a choice having been made with the Two of Wands previously and now moving forward with that choice to put forth the work or the investment in what it is you have chosen, okay? And I see that also here with the Three of Pentacles. Now, this could be entrepreneurship, this could be a brand new job for you, a new avenue, a new career path, a new career choice, or it could just be self-mastery, which is another definition, in my opinion, for this card with the Three of Pentacles, okay? 
All right, so for now, for these central energies, the devil, the four of pentacles, and the nine of swords, this is just basically, to me, this is just clarification or a deeper understanding of what's happening up here, the shadow work that's being done, okay? Um, but let's get some clarification here, please, spirit. Okay, we had one flip over. Woo, woo, woo. All right, you see, you see, okay. There's that five of swords again. Um, so it's definitely some combative energies here. And to me, that is the energies of the, whatever the devil represents for you, for us, whatever that represents specifically. Um, it's like that five of swords energy is that is, 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 is the fighting back of whatever is represented by the devil. The addictions, the, wow, okay. The addictions, the codependency, the toxic people. It's, oh boy, it's just the, it's just the back and forth. Um, it's the retaliation of trying to pull away from the circumstances, all right? Uh, underneath the deck is the Page of Swords. So there's definitely an energy of learning, all right? Communication, um, it could be immature communication. I'm getting an energy of cutting things out here with the Page of Swords, um, and this is very young, youthful, and agile. That's what I'm getting the most from the Page of Swords right now. So it's almost as if, you know, your inner child is is helping you in a way. I guess that's a way of saying it, but at the, at the same time, it's more like... There's just a sense... I'm getting just a sense of agility, youthfulness... Maybe even playfulness with this, okay? Um, we do we do have the four of wands here. All right, we have the chariot. We've got the six of cups. Okay, so there's the inner child. And we have and we have the nine of swords again. All right. The nine of swords is the only card that fell face down. So there's there's definitely an anxious energy going on here. Now, um, Here's that energy of the inner child that I was picking up on with the Six of Cups. Now, this is also energies from the past, right? Uh, past relationships, past soulmates, um, past circumstances, just things may, that may have happened in your childhood. These are all things that are being purged right now. And with the chariot, we are moving very quickly in a new direction. We're moving away from all this hurt and this pain. And we have this greater sense of foundation that is being built because of this, that is being fortified because of this. And this is our own inner foundation, but it also could be foundation between you and someone else. And I really feel like some time apart is helping you guys do that because now this could be for twin flames in separation, um, but I really feel like more specifically, this is for this piece is for individuals or couples that have recently just kind of like pulled back from each other a little bit. Um, and it's not like a big thing. It's just like, I just need some time and some space because I'm, de I'm dealing with a lot of shit right now. I, I really feel like that's going to help strengthen the bond between the two of you here with the four of wands. But if it's not a situation like that, I mean, if you've been in, like if you're a twin flame and you've been in separation for a long time, Obviously, all of the work that you're doing to heal yourself is potentially helping you break, come closer together with your twin. But even if you know you don't see physical evidence of that right now, um, the work that you are doing is still helping you come into a greater sense of balance and union within. And that's really all that matters, okay? Because once you get into that state of union within and balance within and you have a good foundation within yourself, you're happy, you know you feel fulfilled within yourself, you're working on filling your own cup or your cup is full as in like the ace of cups, that's when all of your desires and all of your manifestations can really come forward for you, okay? So that's, so, you know, that's the best thing about, about that. Okay. Now also with the page of swords, there could be someone watching you. I mean, I'll just cover that base just because, you know, this is a general reading and that and that is a common definition. Um, it could be a matter of someone is really actually watching you and learning from you. Because I am getting an energy of learning from the Page of Swords. 
um, you and, and the, the agility in cutting some things out of their lives. So you might be really inspiring someone, helping them see how, and I, I mean, that, you know, that could be me, okay? For many of you, I could be the one that's helping you learn and see what spaces, what things to cut out, helping you understand that. And if that's the case, I am incredibly grateful. Thank you so much for allowing me to be that individual in your life, yes? <laughs> okay. So now we're going to get into the oracle section and I'm going to pull some oracle cards here from the animal spirit guys. All right, well, we have one so far <laughs> that just popped out. Gazelle, I'm going to shuffle a little bit. Since this is the weekend edition, I'm going to shuffle a little bit and I'm going to just going to get one more. Just one more for our weekend. December 21st through December 23rd, Spirit. Please, thank you so much. Just one more message for the weekend. Please, Spirit, just one more message. There it is. Snake. Ooh. And underneath is uh, elk. So this is uh, a masculine energy here, but that's not so important. I'm not really feeling pulled to read for that one. But we do have a gazelle and snake. I might read elk. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, you guys. Okay. Gazelle. Well, all right. So elk was on the bottom of the deck, and I did feel somewhat um, inspired to look and read it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read for elk. And actually, let me just pull it out. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to leave it right here. All right. Elk. Stable. <laughs> On the, okay, underneath elk is beaver. Beaver keeps coming up. Beaver is a family-oriented situation. Um, and there's definitely energies of, especially within the feminine side, there are energies of um, being family focused. And what I'm getting for that is clearing up anything that would be detrimental to a family circumstance or family situation, okay? But here, elk, stable, resilient, headstrong, the father. The great elk, represents the earth element in its masculine form. This means it provides underlying support and stability amidst life's many cha changes. An elk personality, whether male or female, is fully established in themselves and knows their core values. They become known and respected for acting in ways that uphold these values. Sometimes the elk's ego can become inflated, but for the most part, they make damn good fathers, mothers, lovers, and friends. The world needs more elk energy. When in balance, elk is supportive, kind, and consistent. When out of balance, elk is pretentious, high and mighty. To bring into balance, one must eat and drink more consciously, okay? All right, so there's that. So now let's get into gazelle. Actually, since we're in this section of earth, let's just do snake, because we're right here. So snake, and then we'll do gazelle after. Guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of, quote, unawakened or, quote, untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How can you stir it from slumber? An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. The snake card appears when there is no more time to waste. And this is an energy that's been coming through a lot lately. Um, not being able to hide from things anymore. Like I've been channeling it. Many others have been channeling it. Like it's a thing, you guys. When in balance, snake is prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, snake starts and stops many things. To bring into balance, one must practice, or one can practice, kundalini yoga, or definitely some daily meditation. Definitely. And many of us, our readers out here, have been preaching that, y'all. 
meditation is key. So finally, we have a gazelle. And honestly, this feels like more of the feminine aspect of things, to be honest, which would actually be really um, per pertinent, poignant, there's the word I'm looking for, poignant in the fact that we have the elk here, which is the masculine energy, okay? Lots of balance here, guys. All right. Gazelle. Heightened awareness and ability. Vulnerable. The gazelle represents supreme grace. With every move, <laughs> with every move, this awe-inspiring beauty emits sophistication and elegance. Gazelle personalities are often hyper-aware of their surroundings, bordering on hyper-vigilant. And this can inhibit them from enjoying the beauty they've spent so much effort cultivating. No more worrying about all those predators out there in the world. When this card appears, it is time to get back to the present moment. Sit down, find your breath, and acknowledge the bounty that surrounds you. Let it nourish your gentle spirit. When in balance, gazelle is graceful, perceptive, and artistic. When out of balance, a gazelle has food allergies, insomnia, or a racing mind. To bring into balance, one can practice yin yoga, can spend some time in a cozy home, or enjoy some good food. Okay, I'm definitely seeing that as the feminine aspect of the situation here, guys. Okay, so now I want to close the reading. I'm going to get two. I kind of want to get two oracle cards. I want oracle from the crystal mandala, but then we're also going to do the light worker oracle. So let's start with the crystal mandala here. So, so this is definitely doubling as a full moon reading. Even though it's our morning coffee weekend edition, this is definitely a full moon reading. Okay, guys. So guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck, please, Spirit. Just one message. Best message, please. There it is. All right. So we have... Ah, God, uh, card number 49, Goddess Maya and Ruby Aura Quartz, Searing Presence. All right, here we go. Searing Presence. We bring you the empowerment of searing presence. This empowerment enables you to see truth unveiled, naked divinity in all its beauty and mystery. In your willingness to become present, you shall witness the truth that will set your spirit free and make your heart come alive with divine love. No lie, deception, fear, or agenda remains hidden in searing presence, the ruthless compassion of which distills pure truth. With this, empowerment, and with this empowering, you are going to see what you need to see. You are going to be able to see the truth that there is only ever love seeking to free, heal, and discover itself. You will feel the grace that permeates your life and assists all beings. All impatience, doubt, uncertainty, and confusion shall give way, becoming soft like wax melted by a lit candle, and only the beautiful light of truth shall remain i mean that sounds absolutely perfect for the purging and healing energies that we are going through right now yes okay so finally i'm going to close the reading with some oracle guidance from the lightworker oracle Alrighty, guys. Here we go. Closing message, please, Spirit, for this weekend. Aha, there it is. Card number 10. Ooh, all right. Power of the Divine Masculine. Okay. 
I see you, Divine Masculine. I see you. <laughs> All right. There's 11-11 again. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Sweet. Sorry, guys. Give me just a second here. I gotta... I keep having to adjust my mic because the clip broke already. Like, guys, I just bought this like three days ago and the clip already broke. I'm so upset. I'm gonna fix it. I'm just gonna like crazy glue it, but that was kind of frustrating. But <laughs> anyway, here we go. Card number 10, Power of the Divine Masculine. An empowering energy seeks expression from within. It wishes to free you from confusion, paralysis, and stagnancy. It seeks to stir you into consciously chosen action, greater discipline and focus. It's time to end the frustration of repeating old patterns. You are ready to break through into a new way of life. Feel inspired, be energized, and focus on your dreams and desires. Take steps to manifest them on the physical plane. Believe your success is inevitable. And really what I'm getting here is all of this that's going on is helping you heal your inner divine masculine, your relationship with your divi inner divine masculine, your relationship with the divine masculine energies as a whole. And that's absolutely going to help you in the long term, get what it is you desire, manifest what it is you desire to experience, what it is you desire to have in your life. 55, 55 on the counter. There is big change happening, guys. I wanna read this paragraph. The divine masculine is growing within you now. It is the spiritual light that reveals the truth without filters or veils. Let this energy clear distractions, demands, and drama from your life. Let it help you discern what is best for you and give you the courage to act on it. Let it help you sort out what is true from what is illusion. Let it help you dedicate your time and energy to what has most meaning for you. It will empower you to claim success in what matters most to you. All right, guys. So there is the reading for this weekend. I hope you guys get through this full moon energy um, with grace. <laughs> Um, I'm wishing you guys all the best. I hope you all have a great weekend. Just a few points uh, to keep in mind. One, I am doing a holiday sale on readings. All readings except for 20 questions, I'm sorry, single question readings are 20% off. Um, a single question readings are already, are already discounted during happy hour. And this sale is going through, is going to end uh, midnight, December 31st. Also, speaking of happy hour, we're having another happy hour session tomorrow, Saturday, uh, December 22nd. Um, I'm probably going to go on around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, because I do want to do an afternoon session. Uh, but happy hour will be happening uh, Saturday, December 22nd. And, um, you know, we will, I'll get a general energy reading for the collective and then on the floor will be open to single question readings for $20. Yeah. So I hope to see you all there and I hope you all have a great weekend and I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow. Yeah. Have a great one, guys. Mwah. Bye.